Suella Braverman's letter yesterday is uh, seismic and uh, GB News and Talk TV were beside themselves with delight um, over the over the scenario that Suella Braverman could lead a revolt which could bring down Rishi Sunak in the final days of this Conservative government. And, of course, that would lead to a general election and a sure defeat for the Conservatives, but also probably a destruction of the party. Out of that, maybe Richard Tice, you could see him rubbing his hands with delight, might emerge as the, uh, as the person leading the... The, the biggest party in the future. He doesn't have to win any votes in this coming general election in the same way as Nigel Farage leading UKIP didn't have to win any votes. He was leading the debate. My concerns about Farage um, remain exactly the same concerns that I would have about Richard Tice, which is that lying underneath that debate is a movement towards racism. And... Uh, the, 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 there are a group of MPs who I think um, could be could be con, uh, could, could be worrying. They're calling themselves the New Conservatives. People like Danny Kruger and Miriam Cates, co co chairs of the New Conservatives, uh, they've announced that they're going to build a power base by fundraising and recruiting supporters to help its members, both sitting MPs and candidates. Uh, in other words, setting up a rival Conservative Party within the Conservative Party, defying the uh, centralised system. Uh, I've, I've, got, I've got a list here of the um, people to look out for. Sir Jake Berry, Paul Bristow, Sir Bill Cash, Miriam Cates, of course, Sir Ian Duncan Smith... Uh, Nick Fletcher, Jonathan Gullies, Sir John Hayes, the nebulous and shadowy mentor of uh, Suella Braverman, Tom Hunt, uh, Danny Kruger, of course, uh, Leonici, Dame Pretty Patel, uh, she who had been accused of bullying, Sir John Redwood, and Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg, the fellow who spends most of his time uh, in GB News broadcasting. So not all of these are full-time MPs by any means. Not all of these have uh, the welfare of their own constituents in mind. Uh, some of them are feathering their own nest. Uh, the, the group um, to which Lee Anderson, the Tory vice chairman, is also linked, will meet tomorrow, or today in fact, to discuss the next steps once the judgment about the Rwanda um, uh, flights is given this morning. So, uh, in contrast to the noise which is being made, Conservative officials um, from Number 10 have said that the, this, the, the, this group is noisy but few in number. And I don't think uh, I, I don't think she has a huge following in the parliamentary party, says an unnamed individual quoted, I think, in the Financial Times. Um, but uh, is is this enough to breed a rebellion that will topple Rishi Sunak's government? Rishi Sunak's government is far from stable at the moment, um, and Rhys Mogg in an interview, said that um, Suella's letter raised questions of trust. Suella Braverman is right, he said. The Prime Minister has had repeatedly failed to deliver on the promises she claims that he has made. My, uh, my, my issue with her um, agreement, with her written agreement with the Prime Minister, is that, first of all, I don't think any Prime Minister should have agreed to such an agreement. Secondly, I don't think it's legal. But thirdly, even if he agreed, even if she believes it's a legal document, I, who witnessed it? What was, uh, um, what makes this so legal? Is it the fact that it was written on a napkin? Uh, the, um, uh, no Prime Minister can be held to that sort of demand from a junior 
member of the cabinet. Because it doesn't matter whether there are four big offices of state. There is only one prime minister, and it's in the name Prime First. It's the prime minister who reports weekly to the king. It's the prime minister who takes decisions. And yesterday we had a there, there was a very interesting debate in the media about uh, who makes the uh, policy that the Foreign Office carries out and that is carried out by, for example, Lord Cameron. It will be number 10. It will be the Prime Minister who signs off and approves and makes those decisions. It's not David Cameron's decision. David Cameron is not concocting his own policy. And the same thing is true of Suella Braverman and her time as uh, Home Office Minister. And more than that, if she was so aggrieved, if she was so impatient with the Prime Minister, how could she possibly sit next to him week after miserable week, wincing and gurning at the camera during Prime Minister's questions, when she hated him, when she thought he was cheating and lying on her? But what, what impression does this give of our constitutional system? What impression does this give of our government, that we can even countenance the idea that a Prime Minister can be puppeteered by a junior savage um, uh, thwarting the plans of day-to-day -day governments, uh, of day-to-day -day governance uh, with her vicious bile and her ideologically driven uh, obsessions. No, this is abhorrent and utterly foul. This is the stuff of barbarism. This is the stuff, th this is not the stuff of a civilized nation state. This is the stuff of a tyrannous regime. Uh, this is the stuff of Iago. This is the stuff of some uh, Machiavellian device. This is the stuff of the power behind the throne and all that sort of rubbish. No. Either we have a prime minister or, 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 or we recognise it for what it is. Some horrible individual who thinks that she has control because there's a piece of paper. No, that piece of paper should be flushed down the loo. And I'm sure that's what Rishi did if, 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 the, if anybody was arrogant enough to think that. I, I, this piece of paper, this letter ends, to be honest, your plan is not working. No. Her plan is not working. But her plan is not government. And now she's out of it.